much for the invitation and um, I use the same quite often and there are not many faces that I can recognize in a place where I've said it before. But um, blessed are the brief or they shall be invited again. And, uh, so mine is seven minutes, hopefully I'm behind. As I still say, transparency is what these are slides. So let me briefly run through this. Um, I was um, listening to Miriam's presentation when she spoke about the straitjacket and how we need to get out of the straitjacket. But before I go any further, um, Shirley, um, I recognize your, well, for lack of a better word, anger at uh, what a dean has said. I hope it's not me. Um, okay, then, um, why do we have this thing here? Um, we have this here because of that statement of getting out of the straitjacket. The University of Tomorrow is not the university that we're seeing here today. They're going to be radical, radical changes. And one of the biggest drivers of that is the digital economy. And the digital economy will dictate how we as educators and universities and colleges will grapple with this in trying to make learning accessible to the people out there. Um, so let me start up by saying I wish to acknowledge that um, I have in my support Professor Chris Tapscott, the former Dean of the Faculty, my mentor. I have Cheryl, who has just been here as Chairperson of the Department of Political Studies, played a seminal role in this. Uh, Chris, uh, where the undergraduate program of Public Administration also plays an important component in the B Admin degree. And then I have to acknowledge my teaching and learning specialist, Dr. Nomakaya Mashi. Where's Nomakaya? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, Mr. There you are, and also chairperson of the Department of Academic Development in my faculty. This context, and I'm going to talk briefly about all of them. I can't do anything more than one minute with transparency, so let's motor. Um, what we have is why do we why did we start with with this whole thing? Um, it was the idea that we should look at a very, what we would call a medium-sized degree, and you will see that size differs in faculties. Let me mention to you, for those of you not from UWC, that EMS is the largest faculty on campus. Out of the 20,000 students, 5,000 are registered within that faculty. So one in every four students in this university is in the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences. Of the undergraduate, postgraduate, we have a 20-80 ratio. We would like to push the postgraduate up to um, about 60-40, or change that to a 60-40, but that's a long way off. But it's certainly something to strive for. And those also have implications for what we're trying to look at in terms of flexible teaching and learning. So here we have it, this big idea. We wanted to have a whole undergraduate degree in classes which consists of daytime and after hours that we should investigate. We looked around on campus um, and then we realized that the B. Admin degree, the Bachelor of Administration, is in all probability the degree that we can utilize to investigate what are the possibilities of going the route of flexible teaching and learning process in the way that we understand it. We've been doing some work on that, but certainly Let's see where we want to go with this. So the Division of Lifelong Learning at that stage was then tasked with um, assessing what we need to do and come up with some suggestions <coughs> to university management. Um, further than that, uh, they took about three months to do that study, and this was done last year, 2014. And to look at this feasibility of how we can work this degree in a more flexible way because the majority of our students are also coming from the world of work where they hold a full-time job. I'm not talking about the undergraduate only, but certainly most of our postgraduate programs are all in the evening. And therefore, we decided to have a look at this one and see if we can present it in a more flexible way. Uh, after that, a reference group was <coughs> formed under the chairmanship of the team of the faculty. So, we divided our work into two broad questions. The main research question was then how can we utilize this degree in order to look at operationalizing the principles and the practices of flexible teaching and learning? And then how do we develop new pedagogies? Can we do so? What are the challenges as far as that is concerned? 
so that we can meet the needs of this very diverse range of students out there. Age, gender, academic background, school qualifications all have a major impact on this. And then other questions that we've incorporated into that study, and I'm not going to go through all of them, you can just pick on them there. Uh, we don't have time for all the detail, but certainly we looked at secondary, but very important questions in trying to find and establish a picture of who we're dealing with in this. The method, um, of course, um, we always start with a desktop research in terms of our secondary data, and we've done that, but also our primary method of collecting data had then been consisting of surveys that we've done with our undergrad and our postgraduate students in the Bachelor of Admin Administration group. Um, the reasons are explained there. The second form of primary data collection was that of focus groups. And here we had meetings with, um, <coughs> three meetings with second and third year students, and one with um, an alumni or postgraduate group of students. Um, the third method of um, extracting primary data was based on interviews that we've had. And here we spoke to eight uh, faculty staff members, uh, three economic and management sciences administrative and support staff. Uh, we engaged with the private sector and with an employer. And then um, as far as our sick, uh, sorry, conversations is the other form that we used here by dealing with SACWA, uh, Department of Higher Education and Training. We engaged with colleagues. And then, of course, as I said, we started up with the desktop research in terms of our secondary data by utilizing documentation mostly provided by the university to try and develop an insight and a better understanding. Um, our findings, um, pardon the smaller print, but there's quite a lot here, so I've bunched them together. <laughs> Certainly what we have here is that um, we have very high enrollments of working adults who cannot study full time. Our profile of our students are typically people who have to get out into the world of work as a result of socioeconomic background. And the majority of us here who work at the university understand that. So we have a specific profile here, which one may not necessarily find at one of our sister universities. Um, these are all working students and attendance requirements for after class hours. Um, this is a big problem that we have. Um, I'm a grandfather, I'm looking after two grandchildren now, the parents not being here, I know what it is to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, get home at 6 in the afternoon from doing a full 12 hours here, and then go and roll up my sleeves and make food, get them into the showers and then back. So I have a lot of compassion with these after our students who need to do this job, yeah, of still coming to class and then going home and then attending to their families and their loved ones. The B-Admin degree does offer us some flexible specialization. We have um, eight departments contributing towards that degree. Uh, other examples are economics, information systems, industrial psychology, etc., etc. So it does give us some, some flexibility there, but it also needs to deal with the questions as mentioned by Cheryl in her presentation. So here we need to look at how can we benefit from flexible teaching and learning approaches. Um, all staff interviewed support more flexible approaches, so yes, there was no negative feeling that we could pick up towards that. Uh, the articulation routes offer alternatives towards B admin and postgraduate degrees. And then finally there, technology and blended learning can be used quite broadly. But then as we all know, ladies and gents, and I think Miriam mentioned that this morning, um, technology only works when there's electricity. To a large extent. And Miriam said she had to work very late last night. And so we need, if, if flexibility to a large extent is also going to be driven by technology, we need to take cognizance of that. Especially, and that's a problem which is not going to go away soon in this country. Uh, flexible approaches could improve the image and the positioning of the degree, things that Cheryl has spoken about. I'm almost done. We have a few constraints. Um, the complexity of getting all the electives to be offered flexibly, the eight units contributing towards that degree, can we find the same interest in, for example, economics as what one would find in political studies? 
Now we talk about ikamfa, but with all due respect, to a large extent, many people just use it as a dumping ground and do not use this Porsche for what it was invented for. And they use it as a dumping ground for PowerPoint presentations and the program outline, and then they walk away and say, aha, we've done our teaching and learning. We haven't even started to grapple with what ikamfa and others can offer us. And that is something that we need to seriously tackle, certainly at this university. The key conditions for um, the other insights is we need to develop this common understanding. We are in virgin territory still. Uh, we have, well, hopefully we will have sufficient resources. We can never, in a budget-driven institution such as a university, we can hardly argue the case that we have sufficient human and financial resources. We've looked at infrastructure. You've seen the overcrowding of classrooms. One of the major things that can make or break this is the buy-in at top management. You can work as much as you want to at lower levels. If top management does not buy into it, yeah. it's a dead duck. So in this instance, and thank goodness, I have the, what I hear from our rector is that this is an area in which he is very much interested in, in whatever format it will come about, but certainly we have his support in that regard. We need to look at this student-centered pedagogy, which we need to thrash out and see what exactly it is that we need to supply or to provide for the students. Anything starts structure <coughs> follows strategy. So we need to develop the strategy of developing and implementing flexible teaching and learning, and then the structure comes around as a result of that. This we can implement or work on once we have this plan of what exactly we want to do. Um, marketing, of course, here is a big important one. Shell mentioned that sometimes people view this degree as not at the level of importance as other degrees. It's our job to create that awareness out there. It's nobody else's. And then we need to find some committed funding. So what are the future plans? Um, I need to mention to you that there is a recurriculation. People are thinking the content-wise, especially the first and second year, and how this speaks to the third year and the postgraduate years. Uh, we have to develop this understanding and commitment all over. The university of tomorrow is not the university of today. And we need to become entrepreneurial and innovative in how we do it and what we do. And then almost in conclusion there, again, we speak about this plan and that we use this pilot in the faculty <coughs> so that it can also influence the university and the lessons that we can learn. So ladies and gents, we don't have specific outcomes here. This is almost work in progress still. We are closer to the end, hopefully, than the four steps that we've had to engage and go through in the beginning. So I'm reporting on things which are incomplete, and that's why I say blessed are the brief, or they shall be invited again. And hopefully I can come and report back on the final outcome of this. Thank you very much.